Welcome to the course. Before we dive in, let's go over our reference board for this project. Yeah. Understanding and gathering real life references is crucial. No matter how detailed your concept art is, real references help ground your work in reality, ensuring the accurate composition, diffuse, and specular values. Here's the concept art we'll be using. It's cinematic, but likely AI generated, so it has a lot of inconsistencies and scattered values. Remember that this isn't the final look, it's a guide to align with the art director's vision. Our goal is to bring this concept to life, making it feel real and believable. So let's get started. Let's start by reviewing some other concept art and identifying the scale references. For example, in this piece we see a figure in the mid-ground. Since we know the average size of a human, this gives us a solid reference point. We also spot some pine-shaped trees, which help reinforce the scale. In the background, there's a massive structure, but with the right camera setup, we can achieve its scale and impact without needing precise dimensions from the concept art artist. In this scene, our key scale reference points are the stairs. Since most stairs follow standard dimensions, we can use them to calculate scale more or less accurately. Additionally, the pine trees in the background provide another reliable reference to help us establish the proportions. You can apply these methods to almost any concept art to establish your shot more accurately and create a grounded realistic composition. So, and back to our main concept art. Um, this is the scene that we're gonna try and recreate. Um, you can see the hot spot in here is of course the sun and you can see how everything in this composition kind of lead in the eyes toward that hot spot so it's it's a nice composition and uh yeah let's let's recreate it so i already marked some something on top of it we can see some template in here uh on the other side there's a huge house maybe it's some lord lives in there there's that tree uh, for the scale reference the, we have one or two story buildings all over the place so it helps a lot to understand in the scale we also have what seems to be pretty small trees because we can see clearly all the roofs so if the building is around eight meters tall the tree should be around 8 to 10 meters tall probably well something around that um and yeah as you can see we have a lot of buildings so it's easy to understand the scale we can see some bridge on the background we can see some rice fields um some trees on the far background mountain line don't make any sense because those should be very huge to be visible like that but this one here is okay for this scale uh, we can see some smoke to help break up the scale and boring look out of the mid ground uh, and we can see some something in the water it might be human and whatnot now let's get back to our references um we have our biome references um, we can see those are all from japan from around japan well except for that one but we can see what kind of vegetation we have in there uh, there are some oak trees all over the place on the background there are some pine trees but not too many well to help the to help break up the same boring look of the tree you can also see how the pine trees are very huge compared to the one or two story buildings but we're gonna recreate probably more of this picture the mountain on the background because you can clearly see how it's more or less aligned with our concept. There's a lot of pine trees in here. But yeah, the main thing about is is to get understanding of the vegetation of the 
biome that we're going to recreate. So let's look at our references. There are some houses. Um, there are some concepts from games and uh, concept art, but the most important for us are the real life references. You can so we can see how the roofs are made, what are the materials that they use, how they age, what are the correct diffuse values, and you know all of this information. There's our reference board for the water body, so that we can see how different the water is, how much variation is on the water body. The water surface is not a simple map. The water surface always has a lot of variation. And this is gonna be a bit challenging to reproduce, but we're gonna make it. There are some boats and yeah, this is our main reference board for this project. A quick disclaimer, this course is for more experienced users. Um, I won't be covering basic settings, hotkeys, or how to use Macs from scratch. Instead, I'll focus on core principles and concepts, showing you how to apply them, not just in this scene, but in any environment project you might want to tackle in the future. So, let's get to Max. And uh, I'm going to provide to you this scene, the base scene, let's say. Let's say it like that. And, uh, yeah, I already put uh, our concept art on the background in here. There's a camera, some building, a human for the skill reference. There are three spheres in it with a gray, white, and a reflection material. And yeah, the most important for us, the scaling right now. So I'm gonna take the human place it close to the, those, as I believe those are humans. I'm gonna take the house, put it somewhere around here, and we can clearly see that it's way too huge. So let's bring back the camera, and uh, yeah, let's, we're going to play around with it a little bit, just figure out the scaling and. Uh, how far our camera should be from the ground, approximately. So, yeah, something around this looks correctish to me. And uh, here I'm just making sure that our camera is in the middle of the frame. So, our reference objects are also somewhere in the middle, but those are just the references. Now for the lighting, I already put the uh, very sun in it. Let me just turn off the sky map, and uh, we can see the position of the sun over here. And uh, if you bring the background, if you bring our concept art as a background we can see that the sky position uh, that the sun position some somewhat matches the background and yeah here are the basic materials of white gray and uh, reflection sphere so we can kind of check the values of the exposure the mid gray and white the white shouldn't be overexposed as as of right now so yeah this is our base scene now i already put the resolution into it it's 1920 by 810 there are low very settings for faster preview the z depth the diffuse filter and the denoiser the diffuse we're going to focus more on the diffuse filter so this is our scene, and let's get started. Now let's turn up everything, and uh, let's create a new layer. Let's call it the scene attributes. 
and let's put everything in it and I'm just gonna save and uh, I'm gonna provide the link to download this scene for you guys as a starting point for this tutorial series and let's uh, save a new version that wraps up the introduction to the course in the next part we'll dive into creating the actual scene starting with the terrain using typeflow so yeah see you next time